Hey everybody, this is a video uh, for part of our transformations section of our geometry introduction unit. Uh, first, we're going to talk about um, transformations in general, and then we're going to talk about two specific transformations, a translation and a dilation. Now, you guys are already familiar with trans translations and dilations, uh, but we're going to apply those things to geometric figures. So it's a little bit of a transition from what we were talking about before with functions um, and now moving into geometric figures. So if you'll pause your screen real quick and get some of these definitions filled in and um, we can kind of go through and use a lot of this vocabulary as we talk about these. Um, again, a transformation um, is, is kind of a rule or a correspondence that uh, maps an original figure called a pre-image, that's before anything has happened, onto a new figure. Um, that new figure is called an image. So pre-image before, image is after. Uh, the original figure, the pre-image, the notation we just put, um, we use the letters at indicate the, the points that are in the corners or the vertices of the geometric figure. So if you have a triangle, for instance, and it has three points A, B, and C, then the figure would just be A, B, C. But then if you have an image and we've moved it, what we use to notate that it's moved are these um, apostrophes or a lot of times little tick marks in the corner that tell you not only have they been moved but the number of tick marks corresponds to the number of times it's been moved so next to each of these letters you'll see that there's one tally mark and that indicates that this has been moved one time if there were two tally marks that would mean that it's been moved twice and so on and so forth. So what we want to do is just kind of use that notation to indicate our pre-image and our images. Um, also, isometry is a new vocabulary term. Isometry is a transformation in which the pre-image and the image are congruent. So congruent meaning the exact same. So the segments are the same, the distances are the same, the angles are the same. The shape is the exact same, it's just in a different location, it's turned a different direction, but the two shapes are the exact same. So you could probably already start to think about your different transformations that you already know, which would be isometry uh, transformations and which wouldn't be. There's one specific that's n a non-isometric transformation. All right, moving on to another quick review is if you take a look at some of these geometric figures and even we have this dog here that we can use to remind you of our different transformations dilation that is a stretch or a shrink and you can see in this first one we went from a small pre-image pug to a large stretched out uh, image pug and that's our one non-isometric transformation then we've got the rotation. This is a new one. We, we haven't talked about rotations yet, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a future video. But you can see he's been turned uh, counterclockwise. Um, and then there's our reflection. That's kind of a flip left to right. And then we have our translation. That looks like it's been moved diagonally, but a lot of you guys know translations are only up and down, left and right. So it's down and to the right, but you get the exact same dog it's just at a new location so you could see the four types of transformations and the dilation is the one non-isometric where you actually have the pre-image and the image that actually aren't congruent but then rotation reflection and translation they are all congruent pre-image to image all right now we're going to move down and we're going to work out a couple of these individually. All right, just to keep in mind, a translation moves all the points of a figure the same distance and same direction. So if we say translate left three units, every single point goes left three units. All right, so keeping that in mind, I've already got our pre-image ABC right here, this triangle already um, graphed on here for us. And I've even written out the, transform the translation that we're going to do. We're going to translate triangle ABC three units left and five units down. This symbol right here is just a, a baby triangle so that you know that we're talking about a triangle. Three points also indicates it's a triangle. So we're going to translate three units left and five units down. All right, so I'm going to do that for all three of these points. I'm going to move those and then I'm going to connect. One thing not to forget is that these sides are made up of an infinite number of points here as well. 
just A, B, and C are our vertices or kind of our action places where the angles are that are important points. Um, we call those characteristic points back when we first started introducing these things. And I just want to kind of remind you of that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and graph these three for you. So here we go. We've got A, which we're again going to move three units left and five units down. So A is left three units, one, two, three, but then don't put a point because I've still got to go five units down. One, two, three, four. Let's try that one more time. One, two, three left, and then one, two, three, four, five down. And this is my new A. Notice how I marked it because I've moved it. All right, I'm going to move on my B now. Left three, one, two, three, down five. One, two, three, four, five. And this is my new B. And finally, I move C, one, two, three left, and down one, two, three, four, five. And that's my new C value. Go ahead and connect this triangle. And I want to check right away that these two figures are congruent, um, that I haven't changed the shape or the size at all, and I haven't. I've just moved left and I've moved down for my translation. Now I can just record the new coordinates uh, of my image and I get um, for A I've gone right to and down to so that'll be 2, negative 2. For B I've gone left to and down 1, 2, 3 so that's going to be negative 2, negative 3. And then for C I've gone right 1 but down 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, I should say. So that's going to be a positive 1 and a negative 4. And these would be the coordinates of my image. Now, if I want to write that in coordinate notation, I've got to be careful because I need to make sure that I include some rules here. And uh, this is how it's going to look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this in coordinate notation. And here's how it's going to look. Remember that I went 3 units left and 5 units down. So that means all my x values, I subtracted 3 from them. And all my y values, I subtracted 5 from them. So that gave me my new image. All right. Now, again, one of the things that's going to be confusing for you guys is that in the past, we said that X is acted opposite. So you might be thinking that should be plus three because I'm going left and we do opposite. Well, because I'm not dealing with a, an equation, because I'm not dealing with a function, I'm just moving the shape itself. We actually get to write things down as they appear. So if I say left three, that's going to be minus three. If I say right three, that would be plus three. And, and finally, we get some normalcy with that. Okay, so that's how we're going to do that. Make sure you make that adjustment there with the coordinate notation and writing the rule that I changed both the X and the Y values to get from my pre-image to my image. All right, now we're going to do one more translation. And you can see that they're giving us, we're going to use this as the pre-image, that um, pentagon there. And it's telling us that we're going to take each of these points and we're going to subtract three from the X values and subtract one from the Y values. Well, in words, that would mean that we're going to go left three and down one. That's, that's what that means in words. So just to try to keep that in mind, like we did up here, that's kind of the rule that we're going to do. So with our with our pink here we're going to make the image so each point all five of these points are going to move left three units and down one so I'm just going to pick this V because it's kind of uh, the top left that I'm starting with left three one two three down one and here's our new V notice that we have our tally mark to show that it has been moved all right I'm going to keep going counterclockwise here Z left three one two three and then down one that's my new Z Y, left 1, 2, 3, and then down 1. That's my new Y. X, left 1, 2, 3, down 1. That's my new X. And my W, left 1, 2, 3, and down 1. Okay, so now we're going to make our new pentagon. And you can see that the pre-image and image are indeed congruent. We've just went left and we've just gone down.
All right, real quick to describe the translation below in words and then coordinate notation. We're going to look at the red as the pre-image and the blue as the image. Again, these tally marks tell us which is the pre and which is the image. Okay, so in words, it looks like in red, I went left and I went up. So I'm just going to kind of count here. Left one, two, three, four, and now I'm in line with my new A value. So I went left four units, and then I had to go up to get to my new A value. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I had to go up six units. Now I want to make sure that it's that everyone knows that I translated. Translate left four and up six. Okay, so that's what I did in words. Now uh, coordinate notation. What we did to each of these x and y values, we left 4 would be x minus 4, and up 6, that means we were adding 6 to our y values. So my coordinate notation, I'm taking my words and I'm writing them almost as a rule for what to do to each of my x and my y values. Finish up with our second transformation, dilations. Also, a lot of you guys call them stretches or shrinks. Um, really important thing is that this is our one non-isometric, so it does it is the reduction or enlargement of a figure, uh, but it keeps the same shape. So a rectangle is still a rectangle. You're just going to have a bigger one or a smaller one depending on the scale factor. That scale factor is the amount <coughs> by which the shape grows or shrinks, and it is represented by a number. Um, if you need to pause your screen to fill that in, that's fine. I already have the pre-image for this first example graphed, and I'm going to go ahead and use the scale factor of 2 and graph our image. All right, so what I'm going to do with that scale factor of 2, I'm going to end up multiplying every x and every y value by 2. So if I have uh, a value of negative 5, that's then going to become a negative 10. If I have a y value of 3, that's going to come a positive 6. So here we go. Negative 10, and, and then I'm going to go up 6, and that's going to put me right here. This is my new P. All right, 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So that's going to be right 2, but then down 8, and that's my new Q value. And then finally, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 6 times... Uh, 2 is negative 12. So left 2, down 12, and that's the new version of my R. And I could draw my triangle in here as best I can. And you can see I have a right triangle again, but my pink or my image is larger. So I've had a stretch because my scale factor here is greater than one. If you remember from before, if your scale factor is bigger than one, it's going to get larger. It's going to be a stretch. If it's smaller than one, it's going to be a shrink. All right, so what happened? If I write it in coordinate notation, I took every single x value and I multiplied by two. I took every single y value and I multiplied by two. So that's how I would write that in coordinate notation. Let me just finish up by putting down the new coordinates of p negative 10, positive 6, Q, positive 2, negative 8, and R, negative 2, negative 12. Those would be the coordinates of my image. All right, I'm going to skip over the number 2 because it is about the same thing, uh, but I want to use this kind of this, this number 3 here as a way to, to talk about what is happening to our pre-image. All right, so pre-image is A, and sorry, pre-image is B, sorry, pre-image is A, and the image is B. All right, so it looks like I have been shrunk, so that's going to be a reduction, if you can see that A is larger than B, and what I have to do is figure out how much larger. Well, what I could do is just count the side length, so if I start in this corner here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I compare that to the corresponding side in B, 1, 2. So if I go from 6 to 3, it looks like I divided by 3, or I reduced by 1 third. All right? Knowing that, 
That's how I can figure out my new scale.